So how do we know whether we are dating the wrong person or not? So in this video, I'm going to show you 10 signs. Yes, 10 signs that can reveal to you that you are dating the wrong person. So not to waste any time, let's jump into it. Number one, the first sign that you are dating the wrong person is that you don't feel peace about it. You don't feel at peace. You're in this relationship and you're trying to make it work and it seems like it's going all right, it's going okay, but you can't understand it. You just don't have a peaceful feeling. You feel that things are not right. You, you feel that something is not right and you don't know what it is. Have you considered that it might just be that the relationship you are in right now is not the one for you? Jesus, of course, has preached on peace many times. He said, my peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. The Bible also says that for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. If you are in a relationship right now and you don't have a sound mind, you feel agitated, you feel uneasy, you feel disturbed, disoriented, confused, or clouded, that might be a sign that you are in a relationship with the wrong person. The right relationship will be a peaceful one. I'm not necessarily saying that you won't be fighting, you won't have arguments or disagreements, but you have the sense of peace, you have the sense of calmness, tranquility. When you are thinking of your loved one, when you are with your loved one, you end up having the sense of peace. And if you don't have that sense of peace right now in your relationship with this person, it might be a sign that you are dating the wrong person. The second point, the second sign that you might be in the wrong relationship with someone is that your parents and your friends don't like the person you are dating. Now, a lot of the times when you are dating someone, you feel that you know that person. You know that person, you're getting to know this person. They seem cool, they seem laid back, they seem chilled. Maybe they are adventurous or maybe they are driven, purpose driven. They're going somewhere in life. But when you bring the girl home or when you introduce the girl to your parents or to your friends, they don't seem that happy for you. They don't seem that this girl or guy is right for you. And sometimes... You can be hurt by it too because you feel that, what do my parents know? What do my friends know? I mean, this girl makes me happy. This girl is with me. This girl seems to be right, seems to be doing good in this relationship. So what are my friends and family talking about? My friends, listen to whatever your parents and friends say. Because whenever you are in a relationship with someone, especially when you are starting to fall in love with them, you put on these rose-tinted glasses and you end up looking at them through the lenses of love or the lenses of lust, as I'd like to call them. Sometimes there may be problems or behaviors in that person that you don't necessarily pick up at first sight. Sometimes they might be doing it often, but you don't pick it up because you're falling in love with this person. You overlook their faults. You overlook their behaviors or their character flaws. You overlook them. But ultimately, our parents and our friends who are not falling in love with this person, who are not wearing the same rose-colored glasses as you are, they see things for how they actually are. And as a result, they see the real relationship. You... Seeing that you're falling in love with this person, you basically turn a blind eye to these things, whereas your parents and your friends, they see things for what they really are. And I encourage you that you ask your friends and your family what their honest opinion is about the person you are dating. And you would be surprised to hear what they say. If the person you are dating is a genuinely nice person, then you don't have to worry so much about it because your friends and your family will come to the same conclusion. They will come to the same opinion that this person is a good person or a good fit for you. However, if your parents 
or your friends or your family come to you and they tell you that they don't like this person, they don't like the way they treat you, they don't like the way they treat you or behave or their mannerisms, they feel that this person is not a good fit for you, listen to what they are saying. Because sometimes because you are wearing those rose tinted glasses, you are overlooking things that you should be paying attention to. Sometimes there are red flags there, or as I like to call them, pink colored flags because you're wearing those pink lenses. You see those red flags as not so bad. You, or you try to overlook them. You try to say, oh, you know what? This person is going to change. This person is going to become better over time. I implore you. If your friends and your family see things and you and they see how this person is behaving and they don't like it, listen to what they are saying and take their advice seriously. Your friends and your family, they love you, I hope. They love you. They want the best for you. And as a result of that, they want to make sure that you don't make the wrong decision. Because ultimately, if you marry the wrong person, that is one of the worst decisions of your life because it takes of your time, your energy and your resources and eventually when you realize that you've married the wrong person, it's already too late by then. So that is why if your friends and family do not approve of the person you are dating, pay attention to it. It is a vital sign that you are dating the wrong person. Sign number three, you are drifting away from God. If you've been dating this girl for a period of time and you feel that you're not as close to God as you should be, you find yourself that you're praying less, you're reading the Bible less, and maybe the girl is encouraging you not to be so devoted for Christianity. Maybe you try to want to pray with her or to pray together or to read the Bible together and she ends up not liking the idea. Maybe she'll say, oh no, let's just watch Netflix. Let's just do something else. No, let's not pray. Let's not read the Bible. We can do something better. If your girlfriend or boyfriend does something like that, it is a surefire sign that they are the wrong person for you. The right girl or the right guy will be pursuing God just as much as you are. They will be pursuing God just as much as you are. They will want to pray together. They will want to read the Bible with you together. They will want to talk about the things of God, to serve in church together, to do things together with God in mind. A true Christian girl or guy will want and will have the desire for seeking after God. So if you find yourself drifting away from God, it is a sure sign that you are dating the wrong person because the right person that God sends into your life, the person that he would most want you to marry, will be one that is chasing after him and will be one that draws you closer to him. It kind of feels like you both are in tune. You both are in sync when it comes to the matters of the faith, matters of God, matters of prayer. When you want to pray for something and when you are hoping for something, you can count on your girlfriend or boyfriend to pray with you, to fast with you, to go through this season of life with you and they are with you every step of the way. If your girlfriend or boyfriend makes you closer to God, that is a sign that they, that person is the right person. But if the opposite happens, you feel distant from God, you're not praying so much, you're not reading the Bible so much, you're not fasting so much, you're not thinking of God so much, then that is a sign you are dating the wrong person. The fourth sign that you are dating the wrong person is that the person encourages you to go against God's word. Now we as Christians, we have boundaries, we have principles, we have morals, we have an objective moral standard that we adhere to, the standards that God has laid in his Bible. For example, we don't have sex before marriage. We don't shack up together and live together until we are married. We don't engage in any kind of sexual activity or we don't do things the way the world does it. We have our own way of doing things. When we're dating each other, when we are with each other, we have respect. We consider the parents' wishes, we consider our families, we consider that our 
significant other is created in the image of God. We address them as the image of God, we treat them with respect, we treat them with love and adoration. If your girlfriend or boyfriend is trying to get you to compromise on what the word of God clearly says, then that is a sign that you are dating the wrong person. The right person will never go against God's word. If you have a boundary in your life that you will not engage in any sexual activity until you get married in accordance to what the word of God says, and that other person does not want that boundary, that other person wants you to compromise on that, then you are dating the wrong person. That person, if they are a true Christian, should be on the same boat as you. They should have the same morals, they should have the same ideas, they should have the same inclinations to, tr to please God and to submit to His word and His ways. I'm not saying that you have to be on the same page on each and every single issue that pertains to the Christian life, but rather the fundamentals, marriage, singleness, how we are going to be serving in church, how we are raising our kids, the boundaries that we are having while we are in this phase of courtship with each other. If you find that your significant other wants you to lie, wants you to engage in dirty business dealings, wants you to compromise on your sexual boundaries, if you find that your significant other wants you to compromise in any way to the word of God, then you are dating the wrong person. The right person will want to walk the journey with you, upholding those boundaries not because she respects herself, but also she respects you. She respects your boundaries, she respects your views, and she likewise respects her own views. She wants to wait for marriage, she wants to do things right, she wants to make sure that in this process of dating that you are pleasing God, that you both are pleasing God. And ultimately that is what matters most, because as we please God in our dating life, He will bless us because we are serving and yielding and obeying Him in all of our ways. Number five is a pretty important sign, and I would say it's probably the most important sign, because ultimately this is the sign that you need to keep very close, a very close watch on. And this is what it says. Their fruits show a different lifestyle. Jesus said that by their fruits, you will know them. You see a lot of people, especially in church, who claim to be Christian, who seem to be raising their hands, talking in tongues, part of the prayer team, serving in church and whatnot. But then when you get to know the person, when you get to take them on, out on a date or to just hang out with them, you find out that their lifestyle is very different to what you expect from a Christian. You'd expect the fruits of the Spirit to be exhibited in and through this person, but if you start seeing things that don't tie up with the Christian faith, for example, if you see that your significant other is always going out to the clubs and hooking up with other people, if you find out your significant other or the person you're considering dating is unstable in their life, they are lying, they are cheating, they are stealing from people or from places, they are not living a good Christian life, then that is a surefire sign that that is the wrong person. You should not be dating them, but if you are dating them, God will sometimes show you their behaviors. He will show you how that person treats their parents. He will show you how that person treats other people. He will show you how that person might not have drive or zest for life. He will show you how that person ends up being quite toxic towards you. She might not want you to do this, she might not want you to do that, she might want you to do something that you're not comfortable with. And sometimes God may use other people and God may show you directly the behaviors of this person that you should be paying attention to, showing you that this is the wrong person. In other words, God will show you the red flags when you need to see them. The question is, will you pay attention to it? Now I implore you, usually when we are entering into a new relationship with someone, we see the person's bad habits, we see the person's behaviors or something or things that we're not comfortable with and we end up making excuses for them. We often think about, you know what, 
This person is going to get better. This person has a lot of potential. This person has a lot of potential to become a good Christian, to become someone better. But I implore you, do not fall for that lie. Just because a person has potential to be better does not mean they will become better. Do not focus on their potential. Focus on their patterns. What are they continually doing? Are they continually lying? Are they continually treating people badly? Are they continually treating you like you are nothing? Are they continually not doing good when they know good? Are they continually going to the clubs, continually dishonoring their parents? Are they continually doing things that you would define as a red flag? If they are, pay attention because that is a pattern. Do not focus on their potential. Focus on their pattern. Because when you marry that person, you're thinking to yourself, okay, this person will change now. No, the pattern that they already have amplifies. This is why a lot of people end up getting divorced. You think that person is going to change. You think that a child is going to change them. You think that marriage will make them straight. You think that if they love you, they will change. No. You are not God. Only God can truly change a person. But whatever patterns they are doing now, it will be amplified in marriage. So whatever patterns they are doing now, pay attention to it. Pay attention to their patterns because whatever patterns they have now, they will amplify it when they get married. So if you see their patterns are very bad for you, they do not sit well with you, they do not gel with you, pay attention to it because that is a sure fire sign that you are dating the wrong person. The sixth sign that I can give you is that God himself gives you a confirmation to leave that person. Sometimes you might be in a turbulent relationship with this person and all of a sudden they say, oh no, we're gonna take a break or we're gonna do this or I just need to be away from you. If you have a time of separation with your significant other and God through whatever means, be it through a sermon from a pastor, be it through a phone call from someone, be it whatever it may be, if God gives you a confirmation that you need to let this person go and to take the opportunity to break up with them, consider it a sign from God and rather a confirmation and direction from God that you need to end things with this person. Sometimes God sees further down the road and while it might hurt, while it might be so sad that you thought that this person was going to be the one, listen to whatever God tells you to do. If he has shown you who this person is, and if he has shown you what this person is like, what their patterns are, and if your parents and your friends do not like this person, and God confirms it to you that this person is not for you, take that step, that all-important step, and cut off ties with her, break up with her, end the relationship. Because if you don't, you will end up placing yourself in a snare because you have a fear that you won't be able to find anyone else. You have a fear that this person is the only person for you. You have a desire that maybe this person will change. If God gives you the confirmation, take that as a sure fire sign. Sometimes it can be a sermon through a pastor who knows nothing about your situation, but it's exactly the word you need. God will speak to you and he will tell you whether the person is good for you or not. The question is, Will you listen? The seventh sign that you are dating the wrong person is that there's more challenges to maintain the relationship than normal. Relationships are hard work. Relationships require a lot of work on both sides. It's hard. It's not easy. However, a relationship should also be a safe place. A relationship should be something where both of you are building something up together. A, re a relationship should, should be a place of refuge for the two of you where you can share your deepest secrets, where you can have a sense of emotional and mental intimacy with each other. If your relationship is not a safe place where you feel vulnerable, where you can be open with your significant other, then it is a surefire sign that you are in the wrong relationship. 
The right person will not take advantage of your vulnerability. And unfortunately, in today's society, we see a lot of women and a lot of men taking advantage of the vulnerability of other people and end up becoming control freaks over other people, manipulating them to suit their own needs. That is not a real relationship. Sometimes you find the other person employing bad behaviors to try and manipulate you. They, and as a result of that, you end up feeling like the relationship is a lot of hard work. If you feel that you are working way harder to maintain this relationship more than you should, then you're in the wrong relationship. Relationships should be easy in the sense that it should be normal. It should just flow. A relationship that is of God just flows. It flows just like a river. It's like you both are on the same wavelength. You both are on the same page. You both are going towards the same direction, achieving the same goal for each other. A relationship like that has a sense of ease. Yes, there's a lot of work. Yes, there's a lot of intimacy, a lot of time, a lot of preparation, a lot of work that goes into building and maintaining that relationship. But there's a sense of ease. There's a sense of peace. There's a sense of it flowing smoothly. But if you find yourself, you're always arguing, you're always fighting, you're always in disagreements and things aren't working out, but you're trying to make it work, then you are in the wrong relationship because real and true relationships will always have that sense of ease. Sometimes you see it in friends who become girlfriend and boyfriend. They end up becoming coming into a relationship. You see it how they just flowed together smoothly. And as a result, they ended up taking that next step to enter into a relationship because both of them felt the same way. Likewise, in your dating life, if you can't be friends with your significant other, how do you expect to be husband and wife? You need to have that sense of flow in the relationship where both of you can flow together, can build together, and it's easy to build together because both of you are of one heart and one mind. The eighth sign ties into the previous one in which you might feel a lot of confusion. If you are confused about your relationship, you are unsure, you don't know where the relationship is going, you're just in it for the sake of being in it. You know what? It's better that I'm in a relationship than being single. It's better I'm with an abusive person than being alone. It's better that I'm with someone that I'm not even sure I'm going to get married to it's better I'm with them than to be alone by myself, not having anything to do. If that is your attitude and you feel that sense of confusion as to where you are going and what you are doing with this person, then you are in the wrong relationship. Tying up with sign number one, you must have peace. You must have a sense of purpose when you are dating your significant other. Why are you in a relationship? A relationship has only two outcomes. One, you break up, or two, you get married. If you are not looking at getting married to the person you are dating, then why are you dating them? Sometimes you might be the red flag. If you are just dating someone for the sake of dating someone, then you are not treating the other person well. Even if that other person has the same mindset as you, you're doing a dishonor to the girl and you're doing a dishonor to yourself. You need to make sure that when you both are in a relationship that you have the same goal and the same mindset in mind. If both of you want different things, if both of you have a lot of confusion, then it's a sign that you are in the wrong relationship. The right relationship, both of you will be on the same page. There will be no confusion. There will be soundness of mind. There will be clarity. Yes, you're going to have arguments. Yes, you're going to have disagreements. Yes, you might have fights. But at the end of the day, you make up. You love that person enough to overlook the transgressions, to forgive each other, and to work together to build something wonderful. If there is confusion, if there is toxic behaviors that end up clouding this relationship, and you end up not seeing a clear way forward, then you are in the wrong relationship. The right relationship 
will have a clear path forward. And if God is in your relationship, then God will be the one to direct your path. Ultimately, His word is a lamp unto your feet. And if His word and if God is the center of your relationship, then you have nothing to worry about. There shouldn't be any confusion. There shouldn't be any worry. But if there is, you have to ask yourself, what am I doing in a relationship that's ultimately more complicating my life more than making it simpler? The ninth sign that you are in the wrong relationship is that you feel isolated. You feel isolated. If you are in a relationship with someone and you feel isolated, you feel like you've grown distance from your friends, you've grown distance from your family, you've grown distance from your social circles around you, and the only person in your life really is your significant other, then I would urge you to pay attention to the behaviors of your significant other because more likely than not, your significant other is exerting a control over you that you are not aware of. Sometimes your significant other, maybe in this case a girl, the girl likes you but the girl has a toxic trait of wanting to always have control over you. You see, a relationship is two individuals coming together. It's two independent individuals coming together. Independent individuals. Each person should have their own life, their own families, their own friends, their own social circles. And as a result, you, each person should have their own support system. But if you find in your relationship that you end up feeling more isolated, other people are drawing away from you, other, or maybe your significant other is planting seeds in your mind that your friends don't have the best interests for you, your family is jealous of you and that's why they are telling you that the person is wrong, you'd be surprised how toxic behaviors that your significant other exerts over you you end up overlooking because you love that person. You want the best for that person, that person makes you feel good. So obviously if she loves me and she makes me feel good, I will end up listening and doing whatever she says. I would urge you to be careful about that because the wrong person will end up isolating you before they end up killing you in a sense. They kill your social life, they kill your family life, and as a result, she exerts total and complete control over you, your thoughts, your actions, and your ways that you are not an independent individual anymore, but rather you are dependent on your significant other. And that is a form of manipulation, that is a form of toxic behavior, and that can eventually, eventually lead to abuse, emotional abuse, financial abuse, mental abuse. You set yourself up for abuse because you've given all of your power and all of your strength to your significant other without you realizing it because you love this person, but they may not necessarily love you. They actually see you as a pawn on their chessboard. So I would urge you that if you are seeing that you are becoming more and more isolated from your friends and your families, wake up, pay attention, Listen to what your friends and family have to say. Ask them why they are not talking to you so much. And if they tell you that your significant other is making you into a different person than you actually are, pay attention to them. It is a sign that you are in the wrong relationship and you need to end it before it is too late. And finally, the last one, sign number 10. Your relationship is not a two-way relationship. As I mentioned before, a relationship is two independent individuals coming together to establish one life with each other. And relationships are hard work. Both individuals need to give and need to take. Both individuals have to have a degree of compromising to please each other. Both individuals need to make their goals and dreams and vision align with each other so that they ultimately have one goal and one vision for the both of them to work towards. Ultimately, in the relationship that you have, you're basically having one life as two individuals. That is the ideal. That is the ideal that God has set up in His Word. With God in the center of a marriage or a relationship, that is what it is. One life with two individuals with God at the center. If you are in a relationship with someone and you feel that 
you're basically doing all the compromising. You're doing all the work. You're doing all the forgiving, all the apologizing. You're basically doing everything to make this relationship work and you're not getting any effort from your significant other, then that is a surefire sign that you are in the wrong relationship. The right relationship will always be one where both of you are working together. If you find that you are the one always bending to the needs of your significant other, but this, your significant other is not bending to any of your needs, you need to question to yourself, why am I in this relationship? Why should I be in a relationship where I am doing all the begging, I am doing all the giving, I am the one who's doing everything to make everything work, and it seems like my significant other is a weight or a leech on me rather than someone who should be walking with me, supporting me, helping me to ensure that I reach my own goals. And likewise, I should be helping her. I should be helping her achieve her dreams, her visions and goals. I should be supporting her in her own ambitions. Relationships are a two-way street. It is give and take. It has never been anything else other than that. Unfortunately, we live in a very selfish society where everyone wants everything to come to them and they don't want to give anything out. But relationships do not work like that. If you find yourself in a relationship where you are doing all the giving and you're not, be, you're not able to take or you're not getting anything back, leave that relationship now because that other person does not respect you as an individual. They do not respect you as a child of God. They may have issues that they need to deal with. You do not need those issues in your life. You'd rather find someone who is able to give and take. In your life, you need to make sure that you marry the right person. These 10 signs will help you, will guide you into making sure that you make the right decision, the right all important decision on who you are going to marry. Because ultimately the person who you are going to marry is either going to make you or break you. So make sure that when God shows you if that person is right or wrong, you pay attention to it. You pay attention to what your families and your friends say about your significant other. You pay attention to the behaviors, the patterns that she's doing and not her potential. Make sure you trust God with your life partner. There are many people out there that Satan wants to put into your path to derail you from your purpose. And one of the ways that he does that is through the significant other that he might bring to make sure that you stumble. Do not fall for it. Pay attention to these signs. They will help you to make sure that you make the right decision about who you will marry in your life. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God to tell you what to do. The Lord is with you. The Lord will ensure that he will make the right decisions. The Lord will tell you what to do. Leave your relationship, leave your future, leave your single life, whatever phase of life you are in, leave it all in his hands. He will ensure that you marry the right person. If you allow yourself to be observant to the signs and observant to the answers that your friends and your family and God will show you. I hope these signs will help you to ensure that you make sure you're dating the right person. If you find that majority of these signs are what you have experienced, end the relationship now. It doesn't necessarily mean that if you end the relationship, you're not going to find anyone else. There's plenty of people in the world. This one person is not the only person for you. There are plenty people in the world and God will bless you with the right person if you wait on him and his timing. Stay safe and be blessed and watch out out there. The enemy goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. One of the ways that he can try and do that is through sending you the wrong person. Be alert, be vigilant, but most importantly, trust God with every outcome in your life.